The Gender and Sexuality Center for Queer and Trans Life and the Shocket Endowment Fund present the Stephen J. Shocket History Project. The Stephen J. Shocket Endowment provides funding to support academic initiatives in the LGBTQIA studies at the University of Minnesota. Named for U of M alumnus Stephen J. Shocket, the endowment hosts lecture and symposia highlighting important work being done in LGBTQIA studies at the University of Minnesota and beyond. The endowment also directly supports research by offering a full year interdisciplinary fellowship in queer, trans, and sexuality studies for PhD candidates at the University of Minnesota. Stephen J. Shockett was a student at the University of Minnesota in the late 1950s as an openly gay man. He received harassment from students, faculty, and staff members. Stephen was threatened with expulsion from the university due to his sexual orientation, and in order to continue his education, was required to undergo psychotherapy to turn him straight. After achieving success in the computer industry, Stephen bestowed a generous endowment to the University of Minnesota's Gender and Sexuality Center for Queer and Trans Life, formerly GLBTA Programs Office, in 1996. He called the endowment a gift of accountability. By this, Stephen did not mean to reward the university, rather hold it accountable for its actions. The goal of this endowment is to prove campus climate for all LGBTQIA identified students and to ensure that no student at the university receives the same poor treatment that Stephen did. 1996. Beth Zemsky, former director of GLBT Programs Office, was first contacted by Stephen J. Shockett in 1993 when a graduate student of hers found a message inquiring if there was anything gay happening at the University of Minnesota. From there, Beth and Tom Kinsey from the University Foundation began working with Stephen for over a year and a half to set up an endowment that would be received by the University of Minnesota when Stephen passed away. Queer Studies 101, endowment from University of Minnesota alum means more academic possibilities. Though Stephen did not know exactly what he wanted to do with this money, it was known that more work needed to be done regarding LGBT studies and that efforts to change campus climate would best originate from the classroom. Faculty wanted to be proficient at teaching about LGBT folks and academic research information needed to be created by and for queer folks. In November of 1996, a memorandum of agreement was signed outlining the terms of the endowment and the goal of supporting programs that help make the university more humane for GLBT people. 1997. The vision for the Shockett Center. In 1997, members of GLBT Studies Endowment Committee, including Beth Semsky, Tony McNairn, Ellen Messer, Davidow, Gary Thomas, Jean Quam, Diane Rubright, Andy Alfenbean, Scott Scherr, Stacey Halpern, and Aaron Ferguson outlined the vision and goals for the Shockett Center. The short-term goals included LGBT studies that looks at intersectionality, ways of creating social change and identity and oppression, the community having a role in the research agenda, the creation of interdisciplinary program, Collaboration between administration, faculty, students, and the community. Inclusion of non-traditional GBLT disciplines. Successful legislative effort helped by GLBT studies. Establish a visible presence on campus. Long-term vision and goals included the creation of vibrant, productive center of teaching, learning, research, and community outreach. Discussion of GLBT issues integrated into academic and public discourse. Bridge gaps between the university campus and the community. Have a fully funded center that no longer needs to fundraise. Create a center that focuses on diversity and minority issues. 1998. Next steps. While Stephen was alive, 
Beth Semsky, member of the advisory committee, set off to raise $100,000 in order to begin work for the Shaka Center for GLBT Studies. They needed 10000 at minimum to open an endowment account. Plans to raise money included gathering support and funding from deans of colleges around campus, going to donors in the community, and creating a lecture series as a fundraising opportunity. The Community Forum Series. While raising money, the advisory committee wanted to begin doing something with the center right away. The Community Forum Series was a way to engage the community off campus in topics related to LGBT studies. In June 1998, a community forum series was held titled, What's Biology Got to Do With It? Another community forum series was held in October 1998, titled, The Right to Have Rights. Other topics including aging, being transgender, and more. Other activities. In addition to the community forum series, the advisory committee began to give awards for paper in GLBT studies and started an alumni group for GLBT studies, which both continued over the years. 1999. Plans for the Shocket Center. Plans for creating the Shocket Center for GLBT studies began in earnest in 1999. The intent was to house the center in the College of Liberal Arts. 2000 to 2003. The Shocket Center for Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, and Transgender Studies officially opened in July of 2000. Once the center opened, the advisory committee was able to begin the lecture series and focus on getting on GLBT minor up and running. Linnea Stenson was hired as the program director of the center. Linnea Stenson. Once Linnea became the program director, her goal was to make people aware that the center was there and raise the profile of the center, work closely with Jean Nicholas from the Treader Collection, which houses material about GLBT experiences at the U, and work with community organizations. Inauguration of the Lecture Series In 2000, the Shocket Center began an annual lecture series. The first one featured Tony McNairn and Alan Spear. Tony McNairn was an English and Women's Studies professor at the university and closely involved founding of the Shocket Center. Alan Spear was a history professor and the nation's first openly gay legislator. Events from the early days. Bowling for Knowledge, Get Your Mind Out of the Gutter, held in 2000. This was held on Sunday, October 15, 2000. In our kickoff event, October's Bowling for Knowledge, Get Your Mind Out of the Gutter will feature Ryan Durant, Accessibility Director for Twin Cities Pride. Ryan will discuss his experiences working to provide the full inclusion and accessibility for community events such as Pride Festivals. Events from the early days. Queer Bodies in 2000. Queer Bodies is centered to the intersections, conjunctions, confluences of GLBT and disability. Some questions under consideration include what are the similar ways that popular presentations of the queer and disabled participate in decourses of pathology, fear, and sickness? When otherness is discussed within disability communities, why is it that sexuality, gender, and race are usually left out? When otherness is discussed within GLBT communities, why is disability usually left out? How is the disabled community not seeing its own connections to the GLBT community and vice versa? What are the ways that homophobia, ableism are interrelated? How do the values of the GLBT community, extreme independence, autonomy, and hyper-individualism clash against disability culture's values of interdependence, self-determination, and community? Events from the early days, lectures, workshops, and conferences. Lectures, workshops, and conferences. Being Black Bodies, Gertrude Stein and Gail Jones on the Dilemma of Generations. Shock at Center for GLBT, Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender Studies, Distinguished Lecture Series, presents Professor Sharon Holland, 
Associate Professor of African American Studies and English at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Events from the early days, Preaching to the Perverted, text from the event Fire Reads, Preaching to the Perverted by Holly Hugis. After being called a garbage artist by Jesse Helms and having the Supreme Court uphold a decision by the National Endowment for the Arts deeming her work indecent, Holly Hugis is back for revenge with the provocative new performance work. Shock it over the years. Linnea left as program director in 2003. As the leadership of Shockett Center has changed, the focus of Shockett Center has changed too. The center is about supporting faculty research and student research. Though this was not intended to be the main focus of the center, many have access to resources and opportunities because of it. It took a while to revitalize the center, but what has emerged from the revitalization was a focus on graduate fellowship and more faculty involvement. This shift ensures that Stephen's vision is still being honored. Legacy. Legacy of Stephen J. Shockett and the efforts of those that forged the center. The Shockett Center itself eventually closed due to lack of funding and difficulty in convincing the university to continue the center. However, Stephen J. Shockett's legacy lives on in the form of an endowment fund that provides scholarships and grants yearly to LGBT studies and research. We remember the importance of how Shockett's contributions to our campus have impacted the shifts to our campus climate for the LGBT community. These immense shifts would not occur if Shockett did not commit to the work of sustaining our community. The social climate around LGBT plus rights and livelihood has in the US changed over the years. And this is due to the impact of individuals like Shockett and communities that work tirelessly on campus and throughout the nation to make sure that Stephen's desire to change campus climate became a reality. Regardless of the barriers the university proposed, the fight to ensure that LGBTQ folks are able to be safe and hold space on campus has not and will not stop. Questions? Please contact us at GSC at umn.edu. Thank you.